Okay, so now we've got our detailed route in place, let's go and take a look at what we need to do to be able to edit an activity. Now there's a few things going on here. If we click on create activity, we've still got the selected activity in memory. So of course we see the details in the form there. So we need to fix that. And we also need to make sure that when we are editing an activity, we do actually load the activity there. So let's head back to VS Code. And first thing we'll do is we'll go back to our app.tsx and we'll take a look at our routes. Now, React Router can take an array of routes when we need to load up the same components, even though we're accessing a different route. Now, our activity form is used for both the creation of an activity as well as editing an activity. So what we'll do, I'm just going to highlight the code here and then we'll surround this with curly brackets, first of all and then we'll surround it with square brackets so that we can add an array inside here. And what we'll do is we'll just add a second root and we'll say forward slash and I'm going to say manage forward slash and then a colon and then the ID of the activity that the user would want to manage. And of course we open up the activity form. And then we'll go to our activity details component once again. And inside here we've got our two buttons, one to edit, one to cancel. And what we'll do is we'll make both of these buttons links and we'll say button for editing as equals link and then we'll say to equals and then we'll open up curly brackets at the back ticks forward slash activities forward slash in fact not activities this should be manage and say forward slash dollar and then we'll pass in the activity dot id. And for the second one, what we'll do if they cancel, then what we'll do is add a link and say to, and we'll just pass them back to the activities dashboard. And then we can go to our activity form. Now this one's slightly different to the details page because our selected activity may or may not be available because we may or may not be on the creation of an activity or the editing of an activity. So we need to add some logic in here to do something to update this state with the selected activity if we have one or we'll populate it with empty fields if we do not have an activity. So we'll need to make some adjustments here. And what we'll need as we did in our activity details is we will need the ID of the activity, so we'll say const id equals use params and we'll specify the type and the curly brackets and say id string and then close this off with parentheses. Now what we need to do next is instead of using code like this, which was fine when we were just selecting an activity to load on the same page, this is not going to work for us now. What we'll need to do is cut our set local state here and move this above this but for our initial states, what we'll do is we'll just open up some curly brackets in here and then I'm just going to copy and paste in the properties directly inside the use state. So its initial value is going to be a bunch of empty fields and we can remove the code and logic we had there. So what we need to do then is we need to use an effect, a side effect, and we want to check to see if we've got an ID. If we have, then we want to go and get our activity from our store and then populate the set activity and override what's in the current use state. So what we'll do, we'll say use effect and we'll add the callback function. And once again, we'll check to see if we've got an ID and we'll need to bring in the load activity from the activity store. So we'll say load activity pass in the ID and we need to use len. We need to do something after we have the activity back. So we'll specify len and what do we get back from this load activity method? And if we hover over this method, then it's going to return a promise of void. Okay, but I would prefer this returned us an activity from this promise rather than void as we're going to run into timing issues if we try and use a selected activity from the store whilst we've got all of this going on inside here. So what we'll do is go back to our store and take a look at our load activity method. 
Now, because we're using an async method, this guarantees that we're going to return a promise. But what I would like to do is return the activity from this rather than relying on the selected activity in the store because this try block where we're getting our activity from the API, if we do not return something from this and we just return a promise of void, then it's at this stage we're going to return from this particular method. And as far as our activity form is concerned, this is going to be when the method has completed. It's not going to be interested about what's going on down here because as far as it knows, the promise has been fulfilled. So what we need to do is we do actually need to return the activity from our load activity method. And what we'll do is inside this statement, the if statement will say return activity. And also in the try block, we'll return the activity. And this ensures if we hover over our activity, now that we're returning a promise, or if we don't have the activity, then it's going to be undefined. So let's go back to our activity form. And in the len statement, we can say activity. And that's going to be our parameter. And then we can say set activity and pass in the activity. Now, of course, the activity could be undefined, but we can be pretty safe in this case using the exclamation mark to tell TypeScript that we know what we're doing as the developer and saying that there's no circumstance where this is going to be undefined. So we're going to say this is fine. And then what we need to do is give the dependencies to the use effect. And it's especially important in this use effect because we're using or we're setting state inside here. Now, if we forget to add our dependencies, then what's going to happen is that each time we set the activity, that's going to make our component re-render. And every time our component re-renders, then we call the use effect. And then we go and set some state. And then we re-render our component. And then we go and use our effect. But if we add dependencies, then we only execute the code inside here if any of these parameters have changed. Now, as long as the ID parameter hasn't changed or this load activity function hasn't changed, then we'll only execute this code once. And of course, that's what we're looking for. So with this in place, what we should also do is add a if statement to check to see if we're loading. And once again, we need to bring in the loading initial from our activity store. So let's just add this to the destructured props. And let's move some of this down as well. And let's go down and say, if we are loading initial, then we are going to return the loading components. And we'll just say content equals, and we'll say loading activity dot dot dot. And then the rest of the code should stay the same. And let's go take a look. And uh, let's just refresh the page, make sure that our application loads. Okay, so let's try creating an activity. And that one works fine. Okay, so we'll go back to our activities. We've still got a flicker there, or we've added a flicker. We need to clean that up. I promise we will do that before we finish this section. But let's now take a look at viewing an activity. And let's click on edit the activity. That's good as well, because we can see the details in there. Let's refresh the page. And excellent, we can see our activity being populated in there. This is exactly what we're looking for. And let's just check the console, make sure we haven't left any warnings or errors behind. And we've got a strict mode issue. And we've got an unused import. Let's take a look at both of these right now. So let's go back to our activity form and the selected activity we're not using in there. So we can remove that, that's fine. And the other error was down to modifying the selected activity without using an action. And if we go back and take a look at the activity store, then this is where our problem is located. So what we need to do is, for this very specific thing, we need to run this inside an action. 
and let's get this selected activity, cut this and paste it inside here. And that should remove that particular warning. And if we just go back and take a look and refresh the page, then that's more like it. No warnings. So we're almost there. And we've got a we've still got a problem to fix though, because what if I click on the create activity button? Aha. Well, nothing, basically. We've still got our activity located on our form. And there's a reason for this that we'll discuss and fix in the next lesson.